Gen Alpha is remarkably conservative in a lot of their views. Not mm -hmm. old timey conservative. They're more conservative, like this channel's conservative. Um, I would say like they're they're pretty like politically aligned. When I talk to Gen Alpha, like broadly, they're just like super politically aligned with us. But it's gonna require a hard victory by you know the Republican side and some significant voting and voter reform after that victory that prevents the type of shenanigans we keep seeing by the quote unquote elite in our society. Which is unlikely. <laughs> I don't think it's that unlikely. I think it could really? happen. Mm. Yeah, I think that they consistently overplay their hand. I think that they were so happy with how the overplay went during the COVID situation. We might see something else like that in the near future over something more trivial. And the question is, is how far do they need to go before the general public wakes up? And keep in mind that the demographics are not in their best interest. Would you like to know more? It's very good. Low stress watching, although it's really <laughs> hard. Yeah, to Gonzalez is a fantastic. I, I really took him as an inspiration when we started this channel as part of like the character I wanted to do. You know, very. You're not at all like Danny Gonzalez, but I, I mean, I love you way more. But I no, love, well, I mean, well, Danny's he has great a sort too. of wholesome, family friendly vibe, yeah. but put on top of controversial content for us. Right. Of yeah, like when um, he covered the tour of that house that had like the weird yeah. like sex dungeon what? and. I mean, the problem with like conservative intellectual content is so much of it is either like, you know, daddy, daddy figures, you know, like your, oh, your like Jordan, Jordan Peterson, Peterson make your bed, et cetera. And, you know, muscle bros or like angry bros. And there's not a lot of a lot of in between. Well, yeah, I don't feel that there's a lot of people who it's really easy to emotionally connect with. Um, well, here's the thing is ever since. There was, there was a bit of a golden age of this, I think, with, like, the early days of The Daily Show and people like, who is that super flamboyant conservative speaker with the hair? Milo? Milo Yiannopoulos. Yeah, yeah. Like, those were examples of people on each side of the political divide that didn't take themselves that seriously. And I think that's another thing that I really miss a lot is, like, can we just... <laughs> Relax. Stop taking everything so seriously. No, it is yeah. true, actually. Yeah, nobody really takes their thing as, as a, like a bit anymore, you know? Yeah. Or, um... Now it's all my brand, but not even ironically. More just like actual like spurging out about their brands. <laughs> like, stop. Yeah. I don't care. No, I mean, it's something that we need to consider in terms of how we're doing videos because we do a juggling of different topic varieties. Yeah. In a way that, you know, typically if, if you wanted to do like traditional YouTube, like if we were just trying to play the algorithm, what we would do is just one category of video. Yeah. And instead we try to keep like a menu of, of categories, specifically sex, politics, and religion. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of times when somebody's interested in one of these domains with this battering of like AI safety stuff and general science stuff. But when somebody's interested in one of these topics, they're often not interested in, in other of those topics, right? Which uh, can hurt your videos click through rate, which can hurt mm. the way people interact with your videos. Obviously, we do a lot of perennialist stuff as well. And like the strategies I can use to get around that is like one of the strategy that I've been doing with the tracks which is because they're so different from our other content is to visually differentiate the thumbnails mm -hmm. so that when people are looking at the content we're putting out, they can immediately tell. I've actually thought about changing the, the white bottom left corner on the thumbnails to be different colors, depending on the topic that we're talking about. Yeah. But uh, well, it would be, uh, how That's many a little, well, I mean, like, yeah, let's, I mean, maybe like a color it coding. A while is a little little much but making the tracks look very different at least would be good mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's the goal so yeah. we'll see if it works but anyway this topic is an interesting one today which you have mentioned in other videos and you've mentioned this when we've been talking and i have had to correct you multiple times because it hasn't sunk in is you have the notion that people become more conservative as they age right um you know, there's a famous quote that is misattributed to Winston Churchill that uh, it's something like, if, 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 I've, if I meet a, a young man who's not a liberal, I think he has no heart. And if I eat an old man who's not a conservative, I think he has no brain or something like that. He <laughs> if I eat it's an old man. But did you get a chance to look at the research on this before jumping in? I did. And I did one more than that, which was I consulted illicit.org, my favorite place to get 
Ooh. summaries of studies in a nice digestible format to see what they pulled up because illicit uses AI to essentially do a meta study for you. And then it will give you like a paragraph summing up the issue. And then it will link to the studies that it cites and give you, you can actually select columns. I'm like, okay, well, what is their conclusion? And then what was the intervention tried? Like it's just, just plugging it here, guys. Yeah. I love it. It is not 100% free anymore. You have to pay for like cool features now. And I think there's a limited number of searches, but I still love it. So I have my, my own little research here, but I am so glad to talk about this because yeah, I really was under that impression. I think a lot of it came down to this one completely anecdotal, but still formative experience in high school where mm -hmm. a substitute teacher in Mrs. Walsh's biology class, who I just hated. He, he imagine the comic book guy from the Simpsons. Yeah. But he's a substitute teacher. And I don't know what I had said to him, but he'd said something like, oh yeah, you're idealistic now, but then you'll discover later and you're, yeah. you know, you'll come to your senses. And I remember thinking like, fuck you, I'm <laughs> never going to let go of my idealistic anything now because <laughs> you said that and I hate your face. And like, you know, I just wouldn't let it Was go. Was this person a conservative? Like, what had you told them? I honestly have no idea what I told them. I have no idea. So what did you find when you searched it on illicit? Right. So I know what I found, but I don't want to taint your perception coming at this quite differently than me. Yeah. I mean, it paints a nuanced, a more nuanced picture than what I came from, which is that like, typically people grow more conservative. It, it points out that political attitudes tend to be stable over time. People don't tend to change their minds which connects to all the things that you've pointed out about there being like a strong heritable element of, of progressivism versus conservatism. Yeah, the way you vote is in a large part genetic. Um, yeah. And but this is they why, point out on, I need to, before you go further, this is why differential fertility rates between <laughs> progressives and conservatives really matter if you're talking about the long-term yes. future of the world. Yeah. It means that we are going to across the board see a move more conservative intergenerationally. Yeah. And I think you already see this to people who have talked to Gen Alpha. Gen Alpha is remarkably conservative in a lot of their views. Not mm -hmm. old timey conservative. They're more conservative like this channel's conservative. Um, I would say like they're they're pretty like politically aligned. When I talk to Gen Alpha, like broadly, they're just like super politically aligned with us. So a little wacky compared to, you know, like older generations, you know, they're much more secular in many ways. They generally are very accepting of like, well, actually, no, I've heard a lot of even like gay skepticism from Gen Alpha, oh, which really surprises me because I, I do not remember in my entire lifetime to see a lot of people, you know, at least like gay men were broadly accepted among a lot of the conservative groups that I've always. And, and as we mentioned in another episode, 45 percent of gay men voted for Donald Trump in the last election cycle. So they're also a very, you know, politically neutral. They're not like a mostly progressive group, but continue with what you're saying. Yeah. So in, in 20, so like, I guess, oh, sorry, where I left off was, but there does seem to be this unidirectional move toward people going from more progressive to more conservative rather than the other way around. So um, this is, yeah, I, I looked at the data as well. And this is what I found. So the voting patterns are largely persistent throughout an individual's life, but when people do change their voting pattern, they change it from progressive to conservative, and very few people who start voting conservatively will ever change their vote to a progressive vote. And um, are you referring to the the study, do people really become more conservative as they age by Jay Peterson and company? It might be. It, but, the, the, but even the change from progressive to conservative was a fairly small change. It wasn't like a big shift that you see in everyone. It was a shift you saw in a portion of the population. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and well, so and then there's another. What was interesting is that the the further support that Elicit found for this general claim of like, well, there are, when when people don't always change, but when they do, they go more conservative. In 1977, this guy named Alan Clem found that members of the U.S. House of Representative became more conservative with seniority. Now, keep in mind, this is in 1977, but I could also see that in certain systems, people will have incentives to become more conservative because doing so may help with building clout, raising more funds. Like I could see why any politician might, might turn more conservative 
Well, actually, I am going to challenge your thesis here. Really? So another thing that's really persistently seen in the data is that older individuals vote much more conservatively, even more conservatively than you would expect, um, given this change, than younger individuals. But in so, 1975, Cutler argues that that may be the case, not because they are becoming more conservative, but because they're actually walking the walk rather than just talking the talk. What do you mean by that? So what Illicit says, Cutler, 1975, further argues that older cohorts are more likely to adhere to their earlier, more conservative attitudes, leading to a widening gap between cohort attitudes. Okay, I don't get what he's saying there, but what I think is happening is, do you get what he means by that? That, that seems like a nonsensical statement to me. I The impression that that gives me is that older people are more likely than older, sorry, than younger people to actually adhere to their chosen beliefs. Whereas younger people are more likely to be hypocritical in various ways. Okay. I guess I don't get it. That's I, the I argument he's trying to make at least. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't understand why that would cause more conservative voting behavior. Um, but well, uh, um, come on, if you, if let's say, let's say you are a, you know, you were, you're born a conservative person to a conservative family in a conservative community but then you go to college in New York at an obviously progressive university. All your friends are progressive. Like you might during these young years in the city before you marry and get your family and move back to the South or whatever, right? You might kind of get brainwashed for a while and or just be more socially flexible because it what, it's what gets you ahead. It's what helps you date. It's what helps you survive mm -hmm. in that environment. And then as you become older... And you become more confident in your own choices and abilities. Oh, okay. and also now as you get a family and you spend it's more time around just in your own intuition is what you're talking about. That yeah, that's that's well, that's what I'm hypothesizing the dynamic dynamic at play is when we're looking at this. Well, well it could study. be that what you're looking at is age cohort differences. So what I actually expect you're probably seeing here more, and this is why you see this effect so much more between age cohorts, i.e. older people are just way more conservative than you would expect if you were just dealing with this drift, uh -huh. is a changing definition of conservatism over time with younger age cohorts in terms of society. Like if society is drifting more progressive, and I think it is, and yeah. if it is doing that through changing the basically religious and cultural system of youth through a brainwashing program, even if people's uh, political beliefs are fairly persistent over time, um, it's going to appear that older demographics are just much more conservative than younger demographics. And, you know, speaking of, and this is something we're definitely going to do a longer video on because I found it really interesting. Um, okay. is I was watching a thing today that was studying, I mean, people know how anti-mystic we are. And it was, so I didn't know this, but apparently it's like really strongly backed up in evidence that the the Theosophical Society, you're familiar with the, the, you know, these are the ones who like invented the swastika and they were the ones Never who spread a lot of really, mm -mm. oh, well, this will be a fun episode someday. But anyway, they are like the core mystic tradition uh, uh, evangelists in like the 1920s that started what became sort of New Ageism today. And they tried to start a new religion uh, that was oh. like a cohesive sort of cross-religious system religion, like all of the mystics always do. But apparently their system somehow got worked into our public school system not somehow it was a very deliberate very long-standing goal of theirs okay. and now it's basically taught as theology to young kids and they have been so successful that even the stop the woke bill in in florida accidentally included all of the tenets of it in, <laughs> in, uh, a, like the people who have studied this are like, wow, this is like the biggest egg on your face moment that, that somehow this got worked its way into the bill. But it also shows how successful they've been. And so when we, when we talk about a like systemic brainwashing campaign, we really mean that like it's not like a small thing, like religious organizations that had specifically religious objectives. And this is something that I think a lot of people misunderstand is they think what kids are being uh, sort of brainwashed into is secularism mm -hmm. when it's, it's, it's not. It is, it is not uh, uh, 
occult even uh, it is a specific cult the osifist sort of theological and cosmological system which is being uh, pushed but we'll we'll go deeper into the evidence around this but but what we're seeing here is because of the success of these movements to try to change the way that young people relate to religious systems and change the way our society relates to religious systems have been successful we've had this intergenerational drift that is fascinating. Yeah, that could be what's at play, but I, I could also just see what I originally said being a factor, and or perhaps both are meaningful factors. But I mean, I still see that even we have become much more comfortable with our own convictions as we have aged, not only because we've become more confident in our own opinions with time and with experience, but because like literally now we spend more time with our own family than we do with, you know, peers that may be true. influencing us. And so that, that, true, that yeah. happens with age and that is going to affect decision making and, you know, your Actually, it's a political. really strong point that I think you sort of see is the more atomized a person is, like the less they are reliant on group approval, the more conservative they're going to be in their voting behavior. Mm -hmm. This is potentially why people in cities and stuff like that are so much more progressive, because the core progressive tactic is uh, social isolation and ostracization of anybody who shows any sort of ideological dissent or any, uh, you know, basically the ability to think for themselves, where you don't see this as much within conservative movements. Yeah. So what this would mean is that people who, and this is also like a career thing, like we couldn't afford earlier in our career to be oh, as yeah. conservative as we really were oh, because yeah. we'd be fired. Except we for those, that afford. one set of investors that mm -hmm. decided not to invest in our search fund because one, I planned on continuing to work after having kids and two, we may not have correctly answered their question quote, do you believe there is a fundamental war between Christianity and, and Islam? <laughs> no, no, they said East and West. And East I was and like, West? Oh, mean East and West. And they said they defined it, Islam as the East. And, mm -hmm. and, and people who know us, we genuinely do not believe that. I think the Muslims are broadly on our side in this great battle that we're having. No, um, I don't think they agreed with us. And it's so the monotheists versus the mystics is the way that we frame it. But our, our questions heavily mystic now as well. Yeah. They've been real. I mean, the Sufis basically took over Islam and we argue that led to the crash of their religious system yeah. in terms of its economic productivity and its scientific productivity. But so does this sort of change the way that you I mean, for me, it shows if, if my thesis is correct, just how effective the school system has been and the educational system has been at driving people further and further to the left with every generation. I disagree, because I think that if that were true, then what we would see is a strengthening of this trend, although that could show up. So when, when I'm looking at the dates of these studies, the, the study by Jay Peterson and company, and I checked, right. I can't see if it's Jordan. Peterson. I need to I go and see it. who's at the door. It was the guy who was making, he wanted to do measurements of our house to, to make a, a version of it for his little train model. So he, he does like really detailed train models and he lives in Pottstown. And so he's making a train model of our house because it's like a historic house in the area. I'm so excited. Oh, that's cool. Okay, <laughs> so I was cool. Just going and saying hi and everything. Oh, uh, but yeah, yeah what was I talking about? No, no, no. So I was saying you were arguing that, well, isn't this just all indicative of how effective the public school and university system is at creating more woke people? I, I countered back with, well, I don't know if they're con like making them consistently woke. When I'm looking at these these studies, like there are a bunch from like the 70s. And then there are a bunch from like after 2008 and the 2020 study that said that political attitudes are stable, but people are more likely to go conservative rather than the other way around. That implies to me that the going conservative may be a reversion to one's default stable political affiliation well, I think it, it, it after going through is. public school. So I don't know if public school, I mean, I don't know if the kids who are being brainwashed today are ever going to be able to deconvert. Well, I, I, think, I mean, this implies that they are, if like there is kind of a unidirectional political um, no, shift with No, it age. implies that they did historically, because this is looking at older people than the kids going through school today. Well, and so there is another study, 2008, titled, Is There an Emerging Age Gap in U.S. Politics? It does find... The younger voters tend to be more liberal and more supportive of Democratic candidates than older age groups. So, so I mean, the point that I was making, Simone, 
is that we don't have data on what's going to happen to the kids who are going through the school system today. We yeah. don't have data on even the kids who just went through the school system. You know, we just don't. Like, we objectively don't. They're not voting yet. So we don't know if they're going to change in the way people did in previous generations. I think when I, you and I, were sort of brainwashed or rather socially pressured to be extra democratic, me specifically, because I remember this, it was while I was in college and grad mm. school. It was not as strong oh. in high school. High school was actually pretty politically neutral. Like I knew that most of the teachers were were progressive, but they certainly wouldn't have forced it down my throat. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. By the way, did you feel that pressure? Because you went to college to your graduate degree in the United States, and then specifically in California, in a very progressive area. However, your college was in St Andrews in Scotland. Did you feel? Oh, in Scotland, yeah, I felt it. I mean, it, it was it was a non-option to be conservative even back then. Oh, really? Um, oh, oh, that, okay. Anything like that. And it was the same. I it's mean, a this pretty was posh school, school that kind of surprises me. This is when Obama was elected for the first time, and everything like that. And it's you know, of all, if you're against him, you must be a racist. Although they haven't really dropped that particular argument, have they? And then when I was in grad school, uh, you know, I was getting my MBA at Stanford. I remember thinking what pussies the Republicans on campus were because they had these support groups for being a, for a being discriminated Republican. minority, you know, Whoa. and they would constantly say that they feel really discriminated. One of my classmates actually ended up becoming a congressman, and he was one of the congressmen that got thrown out because he was an anti-Trump congressman. As, as Trump came into office, I think he voted to have him, like, removed or something. But, you know, <laughs> obviously he had been been influenced by whatever you know this urban monoculture is in terms of its its aggressive attempt to to create social norms around this because i think that that's what happened with a lot of people is whenever a new political candidate comes into play on the conservative side or something like that the progressives treat it as if it is like a hate crime to support this individual <laughs> and that they are just so much worse than any conservative that had ever existed before. And for example, <gasps> like if we became mainstream political candidates for the conservative party, you know, God willing, I'd love that. People would act like we are so much infinitely more evil than Trump ever was. And that's just the way people are with this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I remember when, when Trump was in office, people acting like, you know, George Bush was just the best ever. An absolute know. saint. But do you remember when George Bush first came into office? And oh. everyone was like, oh, he is. Yeah. Nothing like this has ever existed before. And with Trump, I mean, for people who, like, one of my favorite instances was when he first started doing, like, okay-ish in the polls. But the left still treated him like he was like the worst, scariest candidate in the world. Oh my gosh, you know, yes. He was pretty, you know, honestly centrist. And Trump's always been pretty damn centrist. And I, I know like as Republicans, we're not supposed to say that he's actually pretty weak sauce on most real conservative issues, but he really is. He's he's a very much like a New York centrist. But the left couldn't deal with that. You know, they needed to paint him as a bad guy. And so they, I, I remember it was at Tulane uh, in one instance, somebody had painted, you know, Trump and then whatever the year of the first election cycle was in chalk on like the main through fair. And, or it was some New Orleans university. I want to say Tulane, but there's like another one that starts with a T there. It may have been Taft or something. Anyway, and, and so... They considered this to be such a huge instance that they offered free psychological counseling for all of the students who had seen it <laughs> because apparently so many had breakdowns just from the suggestion that Trump, that, that anyone on campus may support Trump to maybe win the primary. Now, what mm -hmm. I love then is that Trump then ended up winning and it. And even at that time, you know, I wasn't really fully like moved in my politics yet to being like a full on Republican at that point. I was still very much pretty centrist in my beliefs. As you remember when we first met, you know, I was oh, like really? Republican on some issues, Democrat on other issues. But I did love watching those videos from the first election night where he won and people just bawling and bawling. And it was hilarious because they had so over invested in this false narrative that was being pushed by the media and people don't seem to remember how aggressive the false pushing of this narrative was so oh i remember God. nate silver who we've talked about 538 polling he gave trump like eight percent odds of winning and it was so abysmally low even the but even the betting no, no, odds even that, trump. people were writing articles about how he shouldn't 
you no know, one should listen to its polls anymore because it was too high. Because like percent was too high. Oh, no, Lord they, Almighty. because remember, other polls said it was like less than a one percent chance. Yeah, that's right? true. Like, yeah, I guess. Thing. Yeah, and they said that he was like like messing with his numbers and that he should never be allowed to work in polling again. And if Trump had lost, he no. really may have lost like a lot of his prestige mm -hmm. for taking the extremist position of saying there's like an eight percent chance Trump could win. And and that shows you just how brainwashed, how much they were in this bubble of lies and that these were the lies that were put out by their quote unquote pollsters you know their statistics guys and i think that we as a society have gone through so many shocks where we're like oh like all of the media will just like lie to you and then we go through this other shock during covid where we're like they'll just like lie like really like the media means nothing and I, I think that hopefully this pushes I, 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 the next generation, and I, I would be really happy to see this, like the, the, the true independent thinkers of the next generation, to begin sourcing news from news sources, sourcing the way they get information from news sources, and hopefully be even better informed than previous generations were. Unfortunately, the masses are going to masses. They're going to go hard communist, as far as I can see right now which is part of why we so support charter city movements. Now, obviously the alternative to the charter city movement is that we make something sustainable here in the U S because this is really probably the only country that can pull it off, but it's going to require a hard victory by, you know, the Republican side and some significant voting and voter reform after that victory that prevents the type of shenanigans we keep seeing by the quote unquote elite in our society. Which is unlikely. <laughs> I don't think it's that unlikely. I think it can really? happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that they consistently overplay their hand. I think that they were so happy with how the overplay went during the COVID situation. We might see something else like that in the near future over something more trivial. And the question is, is how far do they need to go before the general public wakes up? And keep mm -hmm. in mind that the demographics are not in their best interest. I mean, the demographics are moving more and more conservative because progressives just aren't having kids. So mm -hmm. eventually, you know, as I say, that the, the school system right now is this being a mass conversion system. It's sort of like catching the tiger by the tail. You know, they can't let it go because it will immediately turn around. It's quite angry at this point. They, yeah. I, you know, they can't stop the schools from being these conversion centers because if they did, then the Republicans would start sweeping elections. But if, if if they don't let it go or the longer they hold on, the angrier these parties get because of, the, you know, the mass brainwashing of their kids. And remember, I said I didn't think kids would change their voting behavior like they used to. I mean, I think that was the huge innovation of the cultural trans movement. And keep in mind, I, I think trans people really exist. There is a real thing called being a trans person and gender dysphoria and all that. I just think it's incredibly rare. And a lot of what we're seeing today is people converting because of the social pressures and, and, and the social clout it gives them. And uh, it, it's very hard once you buy into this hierarchical class system. As we pointed out, there is a sort of caste system on the left, which is an inversion of what they see as outside pressures on different groups, right? Right? And mm -hmm. so trans people are at the top of this hierarchy and so that they can sort of join the top of this hierarchy in the same way that like in a goth community, I can join the top of the goth hierarchy by getting like face piercings or something like that, right? Like a visual sign that I have dedicated myself to the community. Well, they've learned that they can do this, but you can't easily detransition. So it's sort of like, even if you would have drifted towards more conservative value systems as you got older, it's no longer really an option for many of these individuals, given how viciously trans individuals are attacked in online spheres when they detransition or show support for conservatives, as we have seen with, you know, Buck Angel, who was really like the first major trans influencer in terms of uh, getting trans acceptance, but he... Mm -hmm made the huge mistake of saying the push to transition children and and puberty blockers are, are both for children are both wrong and they shouldn't be using them as a movement and they basically turned on him like wild like a room full of wild monkeys scratching his face off and what they showed me is that this is first and foremost a political cult and mm -hmm. not really about supporting either trans individuals or trans individuals <laughs> who have moved forward trans acceptance significantly. Yeah, it, it is really interesting with the trans movement, like how much hate and danger those who do not tow the mainstream line are subject to. I wanted to bring up one more th subject on the do people become more conservative as they age question, which is that, I mean, I'll, 
I will admit that we appear to be getting more politically polarized and that that doesn't seem to be getting any better with time. However, from door knocking to get on the ballot as a Republican candidate, I did see some interesting nuance in that so many people, and I only knocked on the doors, I, sh I should note, of Republicans who had voted in all past four elections, plus at least one primary. So this is people who are pretty dedicated voters. I was surprised by the, the number, the percentage of that group that answered their doors, that then upon answering their doors would not even give me a signature as a Republican running for local office. Like I am not running for president. I'm not running for Senate. I'm not like what I think about, you know, presidential candidates really isn't relevant <laughs> in my opinion, but I was just really surprised. And it made or, me realize that like, this isn't necessarily as clear cut as you would think. A lot of people think, for example, like Roe has gone too far and now they have to kind of go into a more progressive direction. And I actually felt myself thinking, oh my God, like, are people going more progressive? Like a lot of people were like, no, I'm switching to Democrat now. Or like, I'm no longer going to support any Republicans. Like that was an answer I got a lot. And that, you know, kind of presents a, a small anecdotal argument in the other direction. But maybe that's just because things have gone so off the rails with the Republican Party in the United States at this time, well, given we'll some see. stances they've taken where they're eating their, their feet now. Like eating their feet, eating their shoes. Well, they're eating something. <laughs> they're eating and I don't, it's something not yummy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, they've definitely gone off the rails in a few areas, which I think has has caused them a significant level of pain that they yeah. didn't need to experience. Yeah. By committing to positions they didn't need to commit to. Um, yeah. Well, that now are are making a significant portion of their own group decide to run con like counter to them in order to keep things from getting too radical, which is insane. <laughs> it's insane. Like they're, they're yeah. driving their own, their own voters away. Well, hopefully we can fix this and create a sustainable political movement in this country that is as a po opposed to the goal of the urban monoculture, the cultural erasure of all the groups. I mean, we don't hate the urban monoculture. I'd love it to stay around. I think it has many good ideas. I just mm -hmm. think it needs to figure out how to be self-sustaining. Well, um, and, and to maybe... <laughs> maybe allow for some other opinions to exist as well. Yes. Allow for people to get promoted in companies despite disagreeing with it. Allow oh, them to... I don't know. <laughs> that's, a oh, that's asking far. a lot. I mean, I, yeah, I obviously it was a complete Nazi thing for Elon to do to allow, you know, people to talk on Twitter that disagreed with the urban monoculture. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and of course, you know, I mean, that the idea of hiring white males in organizations anymore is also... So passe, Malcolm. No one should do that anymore, ever again. Because well, I love you. I love you too. I love you so much. Um, <laughs> as a white male, you know, I have another memory from college that's like occurring to me, where like I was in business school and like one of my white male classmates turned to me and he, and and we were kind of like, wait, like we are the man now. Are we the man? Like. <laughs> It's so funny, though, in that, like, that is really flipped that I feel like now we live in this gynocracy where they're like the patriarchy and the man really are no longer capable of even no, being the man. When, I, when we were applying for jobs, because at one point we had to apply to jobs not that long ago, and like we would apply for the same sorts of jobs. And I basically would not, keep in mind, I have a Stanford MBA and she has a graduate degree from Cambridge. Uh, and you're way smarter than me and way more articulate. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got no offers, like never anything. She'd get buttloads. Mm -hmm, you fucked up. <laughs> It, it, it is very anyone who doesn't realize how difficult it is for a white man in the job market today is just delusional yeah it, it is actually qu quite difficult so even if you're like ultra educated and successful like myself yeah yeah and i feel like the only way that like a couple can go um what's the word nuclear family like trad in that way where like they have like a male breadwinner is if he like works in a trade like plumbing or cell tower maintenance or something where like yeah i'd really only suggest starting your own companies these days yeah <laughs> what we're building our school system around anyway i love you to death simone i love you too gorgeous